Thank you, John. We indeed have a wonderful section with lots of great members. And we have a special privilege tonight uh, to have two world-renowned debaters with us uh, debating the merits of Tau versus Pi. So uh, Andy Rich from Manchester is going to defend the Tau position. And I don't know if you remember those old uh, melodramas where the good guy comes on stage and everybody cheers, the bad guy comes on and everybody boos. Right? So I think the day before Super Pi Day, Tau is probably the boo, and Pi is probably the yay. But I guess that's to be determined. Uh, we're not trying to cook the books for Adam here. But uh, Andy Rich and Adam Kaufman, the great Tau Pi debate. So, um, <coughs> can I come on here? I hope. Anyway, uh, I'm really sorry to be here tonight. <laughs> um, it's really terrible timing, tomorrow being high day and all that, and here I'm going to be raining on your parade, bursting your balloon, uh, party pooper, kill joy, spoil sport, all that kind of stuff. But you know, I mean, the truth is the truth. And you have to stand up for it. Um, and the bad news, you guys, I is wrong. I'm sorry, I is wrong. So today I'm here to spread the gospel of town. <laughs> I've only got 10 minutes. Oh, yeah, I should keep an eye on the time here. And I get wound up and I, I tend to keep going. Just ask my family. But, um, so let's start by considering how pi is defined. Now most people, if you would ask them about pi, I'm not sure about this crowd, but um, <laughs> most people, if you ask them about pi, they, they have the sense it has something to do with circles, right? So uh, let's think a little bit about circles. Um, now, can the people in the back see that diameter there? Oh, sorry, I should have made it smaller. Um, when you're thinking about circles, the radius is the key thing, not the diameter. Think about how you define a circle. Well, you take a point, you take a positive number, and you look at all points, the locus of points that are that fixed positive number from that point, and that positive number is called the radius. Try, I challenge you to try to define a circle using the concept of diameter and not cheating by just saying, well, take the diameter over two. No, it's really hard to do. The radius is the fundamental constant uh, associated with the circle. So the fundamental circle constant isn't the ratio of the circumference to the diameter, it's the ratio of the circumference to the radius. The circumference to radius is not 3.14159. It's 6.28318, etc. And so, unfortunately, back in the 1700s, um, Euler pop popularized using pi for the ratio of circumference di to diameter, but in the modern era, in the 2000s, there are a number of mathematicians and physicists, and the two that get most of the attention are Bob Pelle and Michael Hartle, and we've uh, introduced the concept of using the letter tau for the ratio of circumference to radius. My second argument is has to do with pizza. So suppose you're out with some friends and you're wanting to talk about how much of that pizza you want. So you might say, I want 30 degrees, I want 60 degrees, I want 90 degrees. But you being mathematically inclined, you say, no, no, we should do this using radian measure. I want a sixth of the pizza, so that would be what? Pi over 3. Hmm, that doesn't make sense. Now, probably what you actually do is you don't even use radian measure. You just say, I want a sixth of the pizza, I want a half of the pizza, I want a third of the pizza, whatever. But if you use tau to measure, oh, by the way, what did I just say? I talked about radian measure. Have you ever heard of diametarian measure? No. <laughs> The radius is the fundamental thing. Okay. 
So let's say you want a third. Let's say you want um, a third of the pizza. How much is that in terms of tau? It's tau over three. It's so easy. Even good mathematicians, if you ask them to convert 120 degrees to radians, they have to stop and think for a split second. Oh, let's see, 120 degrees, that's 2 pi over 3. But with tau, it's so easy. A third of a circle is tau over 3. Just think of tau as representing one full term. Tau term. Okay, there we go. Third argument. Trig functions become a lot easier when you use tau. So I know you guys know this well, so we don't need to spend much time on it. You take a given circle, you put your angle in standard position, and then you look at the terminal point, and x coordinate is cosine, y coordinate is sine. So what's the period of the trig functions? Well, you turn around once, and you're back to the beginning. Turn around once, that's Tau, not pi, not two pi, it's tau. So one term stands for tau. Yeah. That begins with a T and that stands for tau. Right? So challenge. Find the function for 60 cycles per second sine wave. Well, let's see, in one second I want to do 60 turns, that's 60 tau, it's y equals 60 tau t. How much easier is that than 120 <laughs> pi t? 120 pi t is, you don't see where the 60 is coming from. All right, so just remember, one turn is tau. Uh, let's see, if you can't read that in the back, um, Bradbird, I brought you a copy of the Dogbert Clue Letter, the newsletter for clueless people. No thanks, I used to be clueless, but I turned that situation around 360 degrees. <laughs> Fourth argument. Let's look at various formulas. Well, this first one I already talked about. The periodicity of the sine and the cosine are 2 pi, and it's a lot easier if you use that, if you do that with tau. Polar coordinates integral. Integral as theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. I'm putting them up here in terms of 2 pi, but of course the way I would present it to my classes is in terms of tau. But I'm just pointing out to you all the places that 2 pi comes up in mathematics. The Gaussian normal distribution has a square root of 2 pi in the denominator. The Fourier transform has a 2 pi in the integral. The Gauss-Binet formula has a 2 pi. Cauchy integral formula, roots of unity, 2 pi, 2 pi, 2 pi, 2 pi. Wouldn't it be bad if we just use tau? Pick a science book at random. Count pi's versus two pi's, and you will convince yourself that the fundamental constant is tau. Now, the pious people will say, no, I've got you here. Everybody's like, oh, what is it? It's pi r squared. No. And that's, isn't that nicer than one half tau r squared? At first glance, you think, oh, yep, yeah, they got an argument. In fact, there's a good reason for that one half there. <laughs> yeah. Look at the following. Uh, so, free fall distance y equals one half g d t squared. Spring energy one half k x squared. Kinetic energy one half m d squared. Where did those one halves all come from? They come from integration, don't they? You're integrating velocity, force, or momentum. The one half arises naturally. Let's try that with area. The circumference is, don't tell me 2 pi times r, it's tau times r, right? Circumference is tau times r, so if you take a little infinitesimal circumference, you get c times dr, but c is tau r, so you're integrating tau r dr. That's one half tau r squared. Sorry, tau wins again. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you tonight to, <laughs> we can celebrate Half Tau Day tomorrow. <laughs> what I'm really hoping is that in 16 years, the Gospel of Tau will be so well spread that we will all be getting together on June 28th in 2031 to celebrate Tau. Now, I know that my friend Adam here is going to come up and tell you a lot of nice things about pi.
But I just want you to remember, everything he tells you about how wonderful pie is, Tao is twice as wonderful. <laughs> Side, 
It's a topological number. How many times does it wind around A? Do you count counterclockwise or clockwise correctly? Um, and the left hand side is integral, you just have to use calculus. <coughs> so it, it is a nice formula from complex analysis that relates your infinitesimal calculations, a calculation that you can do with, with maple or something, you know, a parametric formula for your L, uh, the topological number you on the right. And of course, Andy also mentioned the Fourier transform uh, that has all sorts of, of, of applications, not just mathematics, but physics and computer science. But there's one thing you should notice about all these pies. Not only are they preceded by a two, they're followed by an I. <laughs> so as long as we're introducing a new constant, <laughs> how about a new symbol that were two pi I? Check a random math book. How many times are tau in it? Well, zero. How many times is pi in it? A few. How many times is two pi I in it? A lot. Okay? So, you know, now we're going to call it tau I. But if you don't want just one symbol, maybe you can move them a little closer together. <laughs> Thank you. 